So what's the process for this? Well, the process is we're actually hanging the doors before the plaster goes in. Yep. Or because it's a mid-century modern and there's actually no casing around the door. So it all starts with me checking this wall to see if it's plumb and straight. And I like to do that with a plumb bob. Instead of with a level, which is what most guys would be pulling out for right now. Well, I mean, you know, over the years I've dropped levels and, you know, if it's off just an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch, that shows in the door. You've been off level for many years. Yeah. So this wall is a sixteenth of an inch out of plumb, and that's acceptable. Yeah. All right, so the next thing is, is we have solid jams going around that's going to hang these doors. And the first thing I want to do is I want to remove these stops right here. These are what they call applied stops, because I'm going to fasten the jam behind the stops. All right. All right, now what I want to do now is I want to put a couple of reference lines on the face edge of this casing right here, and I'm just going to choose 60 inches. Okay. All right, now I'm going to measure down from the top, and that number is 22 and a 16th, and I'm going to transfer over here and come down 22 and a 16th. All right, so those are my reference lines that I'm going to use to make the header level. The next thing I have to do is I have to think about what the finished floor is and the thickness of the finished floor. So down here we've got what, tile going over radiant? We've got tile that's about a, just a hair under a half an inch plus the thin set that's going to stick on it. So I'm going to allow five eighths of an inch. I'm just going to take a couple of shingles and I'm going to slide them until I get five eighths of an inch right there. Yep. Take the shingles and I'm going to lay them right here on the floor. All right, now that allows for the tile thickness. Okay. I'm going to take my 60 inch measurement right here and I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to mark right here 60 inches. Got it. Now I want that header to be level so I'm going to take a level and I'm going to run it from this side of the door hold the level, make it level and put a knot mark there and here. Okay, so now when I take the door jam and I place it in the opening, so I put this on top of the shingles and then I line up these two marks right here. That reference line lines up with this reference line. Nice. Okay, so I'm not gonna worry about that side right now, but I do have to worry about the wall thickness on each side, so this is centered in the opening. So I need a couple of pieces of wall board. All right, we'll take one right here, and I'm gonna tack it on this side. So this is gonna let you center it right there? All right, I wanna put it up high because I'm gonna start installing the jam from the top down. You allowed to nail screws? Oh, sure. Okay, now with those two pieces temporarily tacked on the wall, we have just centered the jam in the opening. Okay. Next thing we want to do is we want to start hanging this in the opening. We want to start from the top, so we want to eyeball it roughly right there. Okay. So I know that I'm going to shim on this side. We'll take two shingles and we're going to slide them in this way. That way we'll have a parallel shim that runs across the opening. So I'm going to go just above the hinge. I'm going to slide it in. First thing I want to do is I want to drill a hole, and I want to have you put a screw in. Yeah, you got the jam? Yep. All right, screw coming in. Bring it in nice and snug, but don't over tighten it. Good. Okay. All right, now we're ready to plumb up this jam. I want to make sure that it's parallel with the wall. Take the plumb bob off here transfer it to here. You like your plumb bob, don't you? I do like it. When I measure up the top here, I have two inches to the string. So now if I measure down to the bottom, close to the plumb bob here, I've got two and a quarter. So that tells me that this jam has to come out a quarter of an inch for it to be plumb. And we'll just use a couple of shims. Take that one from that side. And this one will right on top of one another. You want to go right over the hinge area? Or? Right above the hinge because the screw's behind there. We can't slide it with the... All right, now we'll slide them in slow and I'll watch the string line at the same time. You can see the jam coming out. When we get to two inches, we're going to stop. Oh, right there. Now I'm going to drill a hole. 
put in another strip. All right, that's good. Now we're gonna put a couple more shims in here to make sure that it's not only plumb, but it has to be straight. All right, now I wanna take two shims and put them underneath the jam, and you're gonna push them together, and I'm gonna watch these two lines on this side of the jam opening and line them up. So push it in there. Okay, that's good. So now our header is level and we can plumb this side. Now normally you would have been putting these jams in after the board was up, but not in this case. Exactly. This is a mid-century modern house, and you're right. The plasterboard would go up, they'd cover the, cover the board off, and then they'd plaster the walls, and then would hang the jams. Right. But in this case, because the mid-century modern trim is so small, we're actually using the jams as the trim. Right. That's basically going to be the finished look right there. Right. So now the plaster has a little more work that he would normally have to do. He has to cut the board and cut it around the jam, and he wants to put it on there like that, but he, he may even create a little gap like that. Yep. Now when he skim coats the wall, this gap or this space, whether it's tight or loose, can eventually crack and fall out because of the expansion and contraction of the wood jam. Gotcha. To solve that problem, we use this little channel right here. This is an L bead, all right? So the board's held back a little bit. The L bead would slip into that crack it gets held tight to the wood, and then they would skim coat everything covering this bead. So we get a nice clean look, and it's gonna stay clean because that'll never crack. Right, and this solves the expansion and contraction mm -hmm. problems. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.